Welcome to the second of three videos on Microsoft Excel. In the first video, I showed you how to enter and edit data consisting of text, numbers, and formulas. In this video, I'm going to show you how to format the contents of cells and visualize data with charts. This video is all about the visual side of spreadsheets. First up, text formatting. Text formatting in Excel is not all that different from text formatting in Microsoft Word. You select the cell or cells containing the text you want to format, then select from the options in the font group on the Home tab. Here, I'll change the typeface, size, style, and color of this selected text. Text formatting options available in the ribbon are also available from a dialog box. To access this dialog box, select the dialog box launcher in the font group. By default, text is left aligned. You can change the alignment of cell data by selecting the cell or cells and choosing one of the alignment options on the ribbon. For more options, open the associated dialog box. Notice that alignment is just another tab alongside font on the format cells dialog box. Most, if not all, of the formatting that can be done to cells is available from one of these tabs. As far as alignment goes, there are a few features here you won't see with Microsoft Word. For example, you can align the contents of cells vertically as well as horizontally. You can also control the orientation of text. Two more features from the Alignment tab I'd like to demonstrate are Wrap Text and Merge Cells. By default, if there's not enough room to display the text in a cell, the text will overlap the cells to the right. The title I just entered, Monthly Cells Data, is too long to fit completely in C2, so there's some overlap with cell D2. If you'd rather have the contents of a cell wrap rather than overlap, select the cell containing the text, open the alignment dialog box, and select wrap text. Another option for dealing with cell data that's too long for one cell is to merge adjacent cells. This is useful when you want to center text across multiple columns. To merge the contents of two or more cells, Select the cells, then open the Alignment dialog box, and select Merge Cells. There, we have one nice big cell. I'm going to enter the title in this cell, and then center it. Note, text and numbers behave differently when there's not enough room to display their contents in one cell. Text will overlap the next cell, as you just saw. If you remember, as I mentioned in the first video, numbers will show a pound sign if there's not enough room to display the whole number. I think that's worth demoing again. I'm going to enter a very large number here. And there's not enough room to display all the digits of the number, so Excel shows pound signs rather than let the number overlap, as you saw with text. You know, I wonder if Wrap text will work for numbers. Let's try it out. I'll turn on wrap text for this cell. Well, it appears that numbers aren't allowed to wrap either. They don't overlap and they don't wrap. And that makes sense when you think about it. Wrap numbers could get confusing just as overlapping numbers could be confusing. I don't want to get too far off the track here, but I want to mention a way that you can display numbers as text. That is, have numbers to be formatted like text is formatted. Someday you may need Excel to treat a number as text. So, so let's take a look at that. If you proceed an entry with a single quote, Excel is going to treat any numbers that follow as text. And sure enough, when we made these numbers text, it's now overlapping rather than printing pound signs. Notice the warning sign here though? Uh, due to the potential dangers that I just spoke about, Excel is annotating this cell with a warning. 
Okay, I'm about halfway through the self-formatting commands I wanted to discuss. Let's pause for a minute to review where we've been and where we're going. We've been discussing commands on the Format Cells dialog box. One way to access this dialog box is to right-click the cells you want to format and select Format Cells. We've covered the Font and the Alignment tabs. The other formatting options I plan to discuss are Border, Fill or Shading, and Number. Many of the options from this dialog box are also available from the ribbon. If you forget where a format command is located on the ribbon, remember you can always select the cells you want to format, right click, and choose Format Cells. And that will bring you back to this Format dialog box. So onward and upward now. Let's discuss borders and shading. Just as you can control the borders and shading of paragraphs in a Microsoft Word document, you can control the borders and shading of cells in an Excel spreadsheet. For example, this spreadsheet, which I created for one of the templates provided by Excel, has made extensive use of borders and shading. I'm going to demonstrate borders and shading by shading the background of these two cells. And then I'll add a border along the top and the bottom. To modify the borders and shading of cells, select the cells right click and select format cells. Notice the dialog box has a tab for specifying the border and one for fill which controls the shading. To add a border select the border tab, select a style, select a color, and then specify which sides will get the border. Clicking a side toggles the border on and off. Like I said, I'm going to add a border to the top and the bottom. Now I'll go back and add the shading. This time, I'll select the Fill tab and specify a color here. Next up, formatting numbers. First, a concept. A cell that contains a number has both a value and a format. Let me demonstrate what I mean. All three of these cells have the same value, that is 0.5 or 1 half. I'll format the first number to be a percentage, and the second number to be currency, and the third number I'll format in scientific notation. Now I haven't changed the value. They all contain the same numeric value, that is 0.5 or 1 half but they all look differently. They display different numbers depending on how they were formatted. To format a number, you can use the options in the number group on the Home tab, as I just did in this example, or you can use the Format Cells dialog box. I'll change the format of this last number to Currency using the Format Cells dialog box. To open the Format Cells dialog box, select the dialog box launcher in the number group on the Home tab. Notice that most of the number formats have attributes associated with them. For example, under Currency, you can control how many digits to the right of the decimal point are shown. I'm going to choose Currency and specify two decimal places. You might have noticed that the dollar sign in this third number is close by the number whereas the currency sign for the number above it is all the way to the left. That's because the first number was formatted as an accounting number and the second as currency. These are two different data types. With accounting numbers, the dollar sign is all the way to the left. and With currency numbers, the dollar sign is snug with the number. Next up, Portrait versus Landscape Printing. When a document formatted as portrait becomes too wide to print on a single page, you may have better luck changing the page layout to Landscape. In Landscape mode, the printable area is wider than it is tall. For example, if I printed this document right now, these column labels would print on two different pages. The dashed line here indicates where a page break will occur. 
Let's switch to landscape mode to see if that gives us enough room for the headings. To switch orientation, go to the page layout tab and select orientation. Notice the two options, portrait and landscape. I'm going to switch to landscape mode. The new location for the dashed line indicates that in landscape mode, the column labels are going to fit on one page. Another way to squeeze more output on a single page is to scale the output. I'm going to go back to portrait mode. And as before, there's not enough room here for all the labels to fit on a single page. To scale the output, go to the page layout tab and the scale to fit group. As I scale the output down, more of the content fits within the page boundaries. Be aware though that the size of the characters printed are going to be smaller. If you scale down too much, the text may become too small to read. Of course, another way to fit more content onto a page is to adjust the column widths. That's all for cell formatting. Let's continue with the visualization theme and discuss charting. Charts are used to visualize data. To create a chart, select the data you want to chart, including their labels, and then go to the Insert tab. There are many different kinds of charts, line, bar, pie, etc. If you know which kind of chart you want, select it from one of these groups. If you aren't sure, I suggest selecting Recommended Charts. From here, you can see what your data will look like as several different chart types. The type of chart you choose depends on what data you have and what message you want to convey. For example, this first chart shows that everyone had roughly the same amount of sales in January, but in February and March, Mindy sold more than Roger, who sold more than Connie. The second chart is less interesting, but does show trends for each individual. The third chart shows yet another view. This stacked column chart shows some information not clearly visible with the other chart types. It shows that March was the best month, followed by January and February. So again, the chart you choose depends on what information you want to highlight. The All Charts tab makes it convenient to explore other options that might not show up on the Recommended tab. On this tab, there are three levels of organization. On the left are major chart types. Select one of these and a list of chart subtypes will show up at the top of the window on the right. For each subtype, there are usually two options. One with the x-axis coming from the column data and y-axis from the row data, and the other chart is vice versa, that is the X and Y axes are flipped. Notice that when using the All Charts tab, hovering the cursor over a chart brings up a larger image. The All Charts tab also includes 3D options for several of the chart types. I'm going to choose to insert a basic column chart with months along the x-axis. To resize a chart, hold the shift key down and drag a corner. To move a chart, click and drag a blank area of the chart. Once inserted, you can make modifications to the default configuration. For example, for the chart here, I should probably either give it a title or delete the title placeholder. I'm going to select the title and give it a new name. You can select and enter the name in the formula bar or double click and enter the name directly on the chart. To add or delete chart elements, select the chart, go to the design tab, and then add chart element. Despite the name add chart element, you can add or delete chart elements from here. It looks like the default configuration doesn't include titles for the X and Y axes. I say that because these icons are not selected. 
I'm going to select to display a title for the vertical axis. I'll call it policies. Uh, pretend like these numbers here represent the number of life insurance policies sold. Now let's select to display a title for the horizontal axis. Uh, you know what? Um, I changed my mind. <laughs> let's not show a title for the horizontal axis. I, I think most readers will recognize that January, February, March um, are months. So I'm going to go back and delete the title for the X axis. The options available from Add Chart Element are for display elements only. You also might want to change the selected data. For example, maybe you want to remove February data from the displayed chart. To change selected data, right click a blank area of the chart and select Select Data. From here you can switch rows and columns. You can also remove rows or columns. I'm going to remove the column for February by unchecking this box. To remove the whole chart or to delete a chart, select the chart and press the delete key. I'm going to create one more chart in order to demonstrate some additional features of charting. Let's say we want a pie chart showing the proportion of sales for each person during the month of February. If I select the February column, it's not going to include the legend for the February data, that is the names that go along with the sales number. I could create the chart from names and January and February data because they're all contiguous, and then go back and delete the January data after creating the chart as I did in the previous example, but there's a faster way of accomplishing the same result. I can use the control key from the beginning to select non-contiguous chunks of data for charting. I'll select the February data, and now with the control key held down, I'm going to select the labels for the February data. Now I'll go to Insert Pie Chart, and voila, we have a nice pie chart. The last charting feature I want to demonstrate are styles. Once you create a chart, you can go to the Design tab and explore different chart styles. The gallery has live preview, so it's easy to compare the many different options. Well, that concludes the second of three videos on Microsoft Excel. In the next video, I discuss the awesome power of formulas.